Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. And we're gonna start with this small module and at first when I ordered it I didn't fully understood what it does but now after doing a bit of research on the internet for the purpose of this mailbag it seems this is an uh, immobilizer emulator for the uh, VAG group. So an immobilizer is a security component of your car that will not let the ECU start the engine unless a certain key or token is present. And there might be valid reasons why you might need uh, something like this emulator. For example, if the immobilizer is broken, you can supposedly cancel it and start the engine by installing one of these emulators. Or um, if you exchange the motor ECU, uh, once again, it might not be possible to use the old immobilizer and so an emulator will help in that case. It talks over a K-Line interface which is something uh, very specific to the automotive domain, but it's basically a form of a serial interface. At first, I thought this was going to emulate some kind of CAN bus and uh, I was planning to play with it by scanning the bus, but now I realize this is useless for me. It doesn't even have a uh, uh, CAN bus interface. It just has uh, one of these 8-bit uh, microcontrollers and 80 tiny 2313 this video is sponsored by jlcpcb.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just two dollars prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out next i'll show a few different boost converters which i got this uh, first one is based on the sx1308 boost chip uh, and it's supposed to go up to 28 uh, volts output and uh, 2 amps with a 1.2 megahertz switching frequency. But I uh, seriously doubt it will reliably and efficiently run at those levels. You do get an adjustment pot on this uh, small board so you can easily adjust the uh, output voltage. But this is not a synchronous converter. You have uh, this uh, external Schottky diode. So don't expect high efficiency from this. In fact, I wouldn't use this for anything above 500 milliamps uh, as the efficiency would probably be very poor and uh, also the uh, components we have on this uh, small module don't seem like they could handle more than uh, 500 milliamps. And these are some pretty small uh, capacitors and uh, inductor we have on here. Our next uh, boost converter is based on the FP6293 from Feeling Technology and I don't know if it's uh, just me or uh, anyone else uh, feels the same but these names the, the Chinese companies choose just sound strange to me. And This chip can only boost up to 12 volts and can switch up to 3 amps. Notice how I said it can switch and uh, because really all that they're saying in the datasheet is that the uh, internal MOSFETs are rated for 3 amps, not that the chip could deliver that. Uh, it operates at 1 MHz switching frequency and if we look at one of their uh, efficiency graphs, we see it stops at about 1.5 amps output and the uh, figure is below 85%, which is not great. Once again, not a synchronous chip, you have an external diode here on the PCB, but when uh, compared to the uh, previous module, this one seems to have uh, bigger capacitors and inductor. So it kind of inspires a bit more confidence. The output is uh, fixed at uh, 5 volts, but uh, it can probably be adjusted by um, changing the value of these two uh, resistors. And this is the third boost converter I'm going to show. Uh, this comes in a very small form factor. It uses this uh, double-sided load. As you can see, uh, we have the uh, diode plus inductor on one side and the chip plus the two capacitors on the other side. This module is based on the ME2108 from Micro One Electronics. This converter operates at 180 kHz switching frequency and it can output up to 6 volts and 400 milliamps. But the efficiency is not great and uh, if we take a look at the graphs, 
they show in the uh, data sheet they kind of stop at 300 uh, milliamps and the efficiency is starting to go below 80 percent so this module definitely needs to be the uh, lowest rated out of the three i've showed but it's also the uh, smallest so it might be okay if you only need a lower current uh, in a uh, very small form factor next up i have this uh, nice looking press and its uh, purpose is to help press and close uh, watch back covers I've been replacing batteries on my uh, watches for years now and I was closing back the covers by hand but uh, just recently when I replaced the battery on my wife's watch I wasn't able to close the back cover uh, just the tolerances were so tight on that watch that I could not press it safely with uh, such a great force so I had to go to a local watch repair shop but the same day I also ordered this press so uh, I'll, I should have everything uh, I need for uh, next time. It seems to be of decent uh, build quality, it's made out of iron and you get a whole selection of, uh, of these uh, cups which uh, you need to accommodate for the different diameters of the watch. So I'm uh, pretty happy with this uh, purchase and uh, definitely check it out if you're, uh, if you're servicing your watches at home. Uh, this might be of use. Next I got a couple of uh, sets of diamond burrs and you'll notice that these are uh, intended for dental use but I figured they are cheap enough, they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes so why not get some and use them for things like board level repairs and mods. I think these uh, small diamond burrs uh, will do a great job for um, cleaning charred parts of a PCB where a short circuit occurred, uh, repair or clean broken pads or for decapping the uh, hard epoxy of a chip. The ones I have here are part number FG104 and FG105 but like I said the seller had numerous other combinations so grab a couple of them to cover a wider range of uh, shapes and sizes. You will find links for these in the description below the video. Next up I have a very interesting and new USB tester slash electronic load. As you can see it comes in this metallic enclosure with uh, some nice foam protection inside the box which is very similar to what you get from uh, YZX Studio or Ruideng like for example here is the USB tester from Ruideng and it comes in a uh, very similar box. Uh, this one ho however doesn't appear to have any particular model or brand associated uh, with the product. There's nothing printed on the box or on the product itself. But the similarities with the Redang brand are present everywhere from packaging to the TFT LCD they used uh, to how the screens and menus look like. This particular USB tester has the added functionality of wireless charging connectivity with a Qi protocol compatibility. So it can be used to test uh, wireless chargers. It also supports Qualcomm Quick Charge Protocol Trigger and if you add the electronic uh, uh, load functionality this becomes a pretty universal tester for power banks or USB chargers in general. The uh, load functionality can be turned on or off with the help of this uh, switch on the side. And that allows you to use this as a simple USB meter when you do not need the load functionality. Oh, and did I mention it also has Bluetooth connectivity? So you can use an app on your PC or Android smartphone to monitor and log data from this uh, meter slash dummy load. So there is a lot of functionality on this gadget and uh, since this is only a mailbag video I cannot go into great detail but let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see this in a separate video. For now I'm just going to connect it to uh, a power bank and a wireless charger for a uh, quick test. As I told you earlier these screens look very similar to the ones from uh, Ruideng. And you also get the same switches on, on the side which I assume can be used to switch to the different screens which look almost identical to the uh, ones I have on my uh, Redang USB meter. 
I can't seem to find the functionality to trigger the uh, quick charge protocol to a different voltage so uh, it might not have that functionality as I uh, said earlier. So here it is with the load active and we can use these two potentiometers to adjust the load. Seems like this is a fine adjustment while well, this is a coarse adjustment and the fan is spinning. Now let's also test the uh, uh, wireless charger functionality. I have uh, this uh, wireless uh, charging pad from Base US. The uh, green LED has turned on on the charging pad and the meter is showing the voltage. Let's turn on the load and it's confirmed the uh, Qi wireless uh, charging compatibility works as well so you can uh, test these uh, wireless charging pads. Next I got another cassette of uh, simple black on white tape for my label printer because Trust me, once you get a label printer, you will start labeling everything, especially in my case where I get all of this stuff ordered. I try to label every module individually so that it's easy to find what I'm searching for at later date. Take for example the DC to DC boost converters I showed earlier. I like to print a label which will contain the chip part number and the input and output specs so I don't have to go searching for a datasheet. Doing this will consume your tape supply but it's totally worth the cost and as usual you'll find the link to this product in the description below the video. Next up I'll let you guess what this is for a few seconds because initially when I opened this, uh, the small yellow envelope in which uh, this was delivered I had the impression I had just got an empty Ziploc bag but upon a close inspection I remember ordering these uh, small magnets. Uh, and these are probably the smallest I could find on Aliexpress. But if you guessed magnets earlier, you're right. Let me show you a close-up. These are uh, neodymium magnets in a 1 by one millimeter size and it should be 20 pieces in here. And I just uh, checked the uh, Aliexpress page and it appears you can find these in 1 by one 05 millimeter size as well so these are not really the smallest ones you can find there are small smaller ones uh, from the seller where I got these here is a picture of one of these magnets uh, next to a 0603 capacitor as you can see they are very very small I'm not sure uh, how and uh, if I'm ever gonna use these but they just seemed interesting uh, enough to order some. You can imagine using some of these uh, magnets with an equally uh, small and very sensitive hole sensor in a setup where maybe size was an issue but other than that I can't imagine how you would use these but let me know in the comments if you think of other use cases for these uh, very small uh, magnets. Next up I have some LEDs but before I show you these up close do you remember Voltlog 229 where I said I have found the world's smallest digital RGB LED? Well at that time I thought 2020 is the smallest package size you can find with these uh, digital RGB LEDs. However a viewer left a comment saying there is an even smaller one in 1515 package that is 1.5 by 1.5 millimeters and so I've ordered a few from Aliexpress and here they are. I think the part number is SK6812-EC15 so it's based on the SK6812 controller chip but in a 1.5 by 1.5 millimeter package size which is very small and convenient to use for small boards and modules. The LEDs are still rated for 3.5 volts to 5.5 volts, uh, same as with the other SK6812 based packages and uh, WS2812 as well. We know these work at 3.3 volts because uh, I've tried it myself and noticed they work but since it's not rated in the datasheet you cannot know uh, how well they will work if they're reliable or not at 3.3 volts. But even with this uh, drawback I'm glad these exist and I will use them in uh, future projects for sure. As usual a link to these will be placed in the description below the video. And the last item in this video is the ESP Prog. 
this is how this uh, module is called and uh, is uh, one of the official tools from Espressive for JTAG debugging and programming of the ESP8266 and ESP32 chipsets. I've seen this module in a video from Andreas Pies where he talked about debugging on the ESP32 on platform IO. It seems this tool is supported by platform IO and so you can do inline debugging which is super useful. And I would imagine this uh, hardware dongle is also supported by other tools but I haven't tried any yet. The quality of the board seems really nice, soldering is nice and it comes with these two ribbon cables. I believe one is for JTAG debug and the other one is for uh, programming functionality. I'm not sure if this is really a genuine tool made by Espressif or not, I just got it from AliExpress and it wasn't really cheap when compared to other stuff I get from AliExpress but still a good price for such a useful tool and definitely something you want to have if you're writing code for the uh, ESP32 or ESP8266. I think this is an open source design, Espressif are offering the schematic and board files as well as bill of materials for this tool, so if anyone would want to make one it is possible, although I'm not sure it's worth it. That was all for today, I hope you found something interesting to order, as usual there will be links in the description of the video to all of the items shown in this video, so make sure to check them out. Also let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you next time with a new video.